This episode, I sit down with Suzanne Sini, who is the CEO and founder of Innovate Real Estate and Mentorical. We talk about is joining a team the right fit for you, maybe going the route of a mentorship, and what is the best strategy to continue your education and developing your training. As always, I'm your host and San Francisco Connection, Sean Kunkler. Suzanne, thanks for joining me today. I'm excited to chat with you. Thanks for having me. You have had quite the career. You've, I mean, aside from being a successful agent, starting a, starting a, building a team, building a brokerage, and then starting a second one and having a training program. There's so much for us to chat about today. Yeah, I'm ready for it. <laughs> I don't know where to begin. I, I find your your past interesting and what you've built today and the success and the level of success that you've gotten to just absolutely fascinating. Um, I know this one's really, this is a hard question, but I'm going to ask it anyways. If you could compress your life into just a really quick story to get everybody up to speed, I would love to hear that. Okay. I'll try and make it quick. <laughs> so you know, interestingly enough, I um, I got into sales very, very young. So um, I remember I was 16 years old and I remember my uh, manager at the time coming to me and saying, you know, hey, OK, you want to run a team, you want to move into the leadership role. How are you going to manage someone that's, you know, 55 on your team? And, you know, my answer was just like, How? I mean, same way I would manage anyone else on my team. Doesn't matter what the what your age is. And I really took that my whole life. I, I tried not to focus on age and focused on, um, you know, what my, what my skill set was. And so, you know, I started businesses very young. I had a marketing company at 20. Um, fast forwarding to getting into the real estate world, because I think that that is where I have thrived and, and where things you know, where, where we are now. Um, so I actually started my real estate career working at Zillow and, um, it was really cool because I was, I, I had the ability to work with top agents all across the country. My role was helping them build their business and coaching them. And so it really gave me a unique advantage because I was able to have a sneak peek into top performers business across the country. Everyone did things a little differently. And, um, you know, I hit a point where I was basically just like, I, I just have to do this. <laughs> I need to do this myself. I'm, I'm helping them build their business. I'm telling them what to do, but I, I almost felt a little bit like a hypocrite because I wasn't doing it myself. Yeah. I decided to jump in the real estate space and got in the luxury market here in Orange County and, um, very quickly saw success. Um, I ended up partnering with Active Realty. And um, we, we, I grew the brokerage. Basically, when I joined, they had 25 agents. Um, so we went from 25 to 200. Amazing. That is incredible. We became the top mega team 2021 um, in all of California. Um, 2022, we finished number three in California. So um, yeah, it was it it was a lot of fun. We moved fast and we had lofty goals. Um, and then this year I decided to open up Innovate Realty and and start my own brokerage. We um have 130, 140 agents in five months. So um things are moving equally as fast uh <laughs> over here as well. I'm curious, what do you attribute that incredible incredibly fast growth that you've seen in both both locations? Number one, I think it's really important to treat your business like a business. I think in real estate, often you will find people that have seen great success um, in the in the real estate transaction become leaders. Um, but that doesn't always mean that they know how to lead or know how to run their business like a business. Um, and so I think I have always treated real estate like a business from day one. But the most important thing 
is that um, people actually enjoy working with me because I, it's just different. I actually care, you know, and um, it's not not everyone is a number to me. And I think, you know, I'm able to connect with people. I would say um, that I've been told that that's my superpower is building relationships and communication and um, so I, I try and connect with everyone on a different level. And so I can 100 percent attribute the fast growth and really the um, the agents that are attracted to my brokerage. It's because they know that I actually care about them and and, and they're not just a number um, and that I'm going to do whatever I can to help them be successful in their career. That's a game changer. I mean, it's. It, that's it's the same approach we have with our clients and all of the vendors we work with are the quote we have on the back end is lead with relationship. And if you focus on really just genuinely taking care of people, everything else just takes care of itself. The money follows, the success follows. It's all secondary to that one thing. And I love that it, you've not only done it once, but twice, which that's always that's the standard. Like if you can replicate the thing that you're doing, that is the mark of success. Cause then you can, you can scale that exponentially because you actually know what the formula is rather than guessing what it is. And to go back to when your manager asked, how would you manage somebody who's 55? It's the same thing. If you really genuinely care about them and understand what their desires are and what their pains are, then you can guide them through whatever next challenge they have. I would say your other su superpower is fearless. You're just, you go for it, which I love. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, what's the worst that's going to happen, right? I think um, with every failure, there's a, a lesson learned. So, um, you know, it's, I, I try really hard not to think about you know, the, the, what the bad thing that can happen or how things might not work out. I, I genuinely feel like that's just not an option. So that's how I proceed with everything I do. And, um, you know, I, I tell myself that failure is not an option. And if it does happen, because, you know, I mean, things, things do happen. Um, I, I know that I'm going to learn something from it and I'm going to be better on the other side. My friend's grandfather, who owned Auto Trader? He's the guy who created the whole. Back when I was a kid, it was like the place to go look for cars. His quote was, "I came in with nothing, and the worst that's going to happen is that I'm going to leave with nothing." And so it's that quote obviously is stuck with me all of these decades later, because sometimes thinking about what's the worst thing that can happen and really breaking it down to the ridiculous, and you're like, "Well, I'm not going to die. I'm not going to lose an arm." Like okay, I'm going to maybe lose some time, lose some energy, but that's fine. Like I'll learn something and that's, that's, I'm getting an education out of it. So that's actually an upside. Yeah. I mean, it, within that, um, you know, time that we fast forwarded through <laughs> when I moved into real estate, there were, there were failed. Yeah, there were failed businesses and, and, but I never stopped trying. And I think, um, as you said, I, I do feel that when you come from, when you don't come from money, I don't come from money. I, um, you know, we, we never had a lot when I was growing up. And so for me, you know, it, it, what am I really afraid of? You know, you got to give it a go because, um, that's the only way you're going to make it. So it's the only chance you have. Many people will look at you and just be, oh, she's super successful, must be nice, or she's super lucky. And so I appreciate that you shared that you didn't come from this place of abundance. You you came from the other side and you worked hard to get to this point. And I, I feel like that's a good frame, especially for somebody who's starting out in the business. I started with barely having two nickels to rub together when I got into real estate and built everything up from that, from that day forward, you have this different internal, you know what the worst case scenario is. And you're like, well, I don't want that. So you work your butt off to have the opposite. Exactly. To kind of do a really quick rewind, because I know we covered a ton of ground, but when you were at Zillow and you were seeing what the successful agents were doing versus everybody else, what were they doing? 
or not doing? I think it goes back to one of the first points that I mentioned of treating their their business like a business. I think that, um, you know, you would see people that uh, I would see people that would purchase from uh, from Zillow. They would purchase leads from Zillow. They would see um, a little bit of success there. They would spend all their money and then they would say, we're not going to buy anything else. We don't have any money. And, you know, I would look at that and I'd be like, well, you know, that's actually how you made your money. So you might want to reinvest some of that back into your business. So, um, you know, it, it was really the, the most successful agents that I saw. They looked at the bigger picture it wasn't about, you know, one transaction. It was always about uh, building, bringing more agents on and then bringing those agents opportunities. And I think that that's another thing that um, that I took really seriously and brought to both brokerages that I uh, manage is, you know, I think brokerages historically, it's like, hey, we're going to give you the red carpet treatment. You're going to get your nice splits. You're going to, you know, have some cool marketing materials, all the bells and whistles. But what opportunities do you get from your brokerage? And so I, I looked at that from kind of the team level because I saw that happening quite a bit um, at the team level. And I just thought, you know, why why wouldn't we do that at the brokerage level? So I think that that's another um, another big reason why people want to be a part of Innovate Realty is because they know that we put a heavy focus on actually bringing some value to our agents, actually bringing opportunities, whether that's through lead generation or great partnerships that we make with other people um, and other companies to bring opportunities. But whatever it is, they know that that's one of my main focuses. Um, and that's something that I learned from being at Zillow. Interesting. Are you currently and still actively selling or do you just hand everything off? Yeah, I'm not. I mean, I will. Um, I'll be on a listing here and there. Um, I work with some referrals, but 95% of the time I'm I'm bringing it to the agents. I personally, I've been in sales for forever, for a couple decades. Anytime I had a manager who was selling against me, they were never the best manager. The best managers I always had, they they focused, they stayed in their lane they knew what they were amazing at and they just put their foot on the gas pedal and just kept it there. And when I have found, and this is, I mean, anybody can correct me if I'm wrong, but when, when agent, when managers are selling, they're distracted and they're also, they're basically cannibalizing from the people they're trying to bring up also. And so I actually appreciate that you have your lane within that. Funny you say that. That was one of the main reasons why I kind of broke off and and did my own thing because I did feel like there was a little bit of a conflict historically um, with like broker competing. And it's just, you know, my focus is not to make me the superstar. It's to make my agents the superstars. And so the more that I can do to build them up, um, you know, and put the focus on them, the better I'm doing at my job. <laughs> and even on the agent level, it's the same thing. If you put your client on the pedestal and not yourself, that's the same thing. You're leading with the relationship and you're building somebody else up. You're focused on them and bringing to the table what they actually need. So we're going to kind of jump around a lot. You're fascinating and we only have a, a finite amount of time to get a lot of lot into this conversation but within the brokerage you saw a need for training and education so then you broke off and created your own training program tell me a little bit more about that yeah so you know when i first came into the industry um, you know, of course, being at Zillow and coaching top agents, I thought I had this down. <laughs> I thought all I needed to do was learn the real estate transaction. And then it's so easy. You know, we just answer the phone and deals start falling in our laps. <laughs> but um, I realized very quickly that 
um, the the tests that we take, the the prep classes we do, it just doesn't. It it really doesn't give you the experience that you need to be successful. And uh, so I actually joined a team and I got a mentor right away. And um, she trained me. I mean, she really took a lot of time and invested all of her efforts in making me as good as as she she is. Um, and so I, I owe a ton to Britt Davis. I, I owe her a ton for, she really did teach me how to be the best agent that I could be. The problem is, is that I knew going into that, I mean, I'm an entrepreneur. I have been since I was, you know, 20 years old. So going into that, I knew that that wasn't going to last. I knew that I wasn't going to stay on her team forever. And I tried to be very transparent with that because the last thing uh, that I want to do is is break any hearts, you know? And um, and so I I took that experience. And, and, you know, long story short, we ended up kind of going our separate ways organically anyway because she was moving and, and it kind of worked out. But... I saw that experience and then I saw from, you know, working at Zillow and and working with team leads and hearing the stories all the time about agents joining the team and then leaving and taking all of their their information that they gave them and their training and their lead sources and their database and everything else and I just thought, you know, I don't I don't think that any agent comes into that situation with that mindset, right? Like, I'm going to screw over this team lead that's showing me the ropes. It's it's truly out of necessity. So I built on my own experience and I thought, you know what? I, I think a lot of people are going through this. I think a lot of people feel that if you don't join a team in real estate or a brokerage that is going to offer a ridiculous amount of handholding and training, you're not going to make it in real estate. And I, I really do believe that. And so it's a huge passion of mine to elevate the real estate industry to train agents to be the best they can be. Because I think the other part of that is there is no real consistent training. So, you know, us as real estate agents, we sometimes get a bad rap because there are agents out there that don't really know what they're doing. And um, and I'm not, I, I don't fault them for that. I think that we're lacking some consistent training within our industry. So all that to say, I created a platform called Mentorical, um, where I have a plethora of mentors able to, um, you know, chime in, answer questions whenever needed. Um, there are training courses, there are handouts, there are checklists. I mean, you name it. If you want to have and get through escrow successfully, you can just follow this checklist and you are going to look like an absolute rock star to your clients. You're going to get referrals and you're going to be successful and you're going to learn. So I'm kind of giving away all the secrets. I know the industry is kind of like, eh, but we all have our thing. We we keep it to ourselves. But I think that's the problem. I think we have to share as much as we possibly can, elevate agents as much as we possibly can, because you know, I welcome, I welcome that. I know the agents that I work with welcome that type of competition and the better one looks, the better we all look. So I completely agree. And that's the whole, my whole point, my personal adventure with this podcast is sitting down with amazing agents, learning their secrets, what they're doing and sharing it across all these networks and the end is to elevate all of us because at the end of the day, we don't do transactions by ourselves and it's much easier if the other person is on the level. It's, it's going to be a smoother transaction for everybody, for your client who you have the fiduciary obligation. So I'd love that you actually put this together into a program, which is a huge amount of work. I'm going to ramble for a second but it's going to make sense with you. You are clearly an entrepreneur 
And there are people who are, they're highly driven and they want the education of the team, but they don't want to be on a team. Like they don't have that, that need. And there's some people who thrive on a team and they thrive working in, in a community setting. And I think it's interesting and we didn't really talk about it, but it, it, it kind of reveals itself through this is really understanding who you are as an individual and finding that right situation, because to your point, you're going to break hearts because if you're joining a team just to gain information with in the back of your mind, I'm just going to get to a point and then leave and then do things on my own. You're essentially looking at that team as just a college education. And I think if that's the case, just be upfront with the person. And so they know, so both sides know exactly what type of relationship you're going to have. And that is exactly what I'm going for. And I think teams are so important. Like I, I do believe in the power of teams. I um, am blessed to have some of the top teams in Southern California at Innovate Realty. And I absolutely see the value in that. This is not for them per se. This is for, you know, the, the, the team is so much more than just training, right? And I think if you are just looking for training and you are, you know, ready or or you come in knowing, hey, yeah, I'm an intra- entrepreneur. I'm going to start my own team. I want to start my own team right away. You shouldn't join somebody else's team and take that time from the team lead, you know, and um, I've just seen a lot of broken hearts and a lot of um, hurt. And I think, again, I, I kind of put that back on our, our industry. And I, I think that there's a, there should be another way, which is, you know, why I created Mentorical. I completely agree. I think there's a weird amount of pressure to join teams, whereas some people just do much better when they have a mentor and then they're off to the races after that point, after they've done X amount of deals. And some people like myself, if I have a challenge, I I'm an incredible resor- resourceful where I will, I'll look online, I'll call people, I'll talk to, like I'll network it out and I'll figure out what that missing piece is. Whereas other people, they'll just kind of wallow in it and they need somebody over their shoulder being like, hey, are you stuck at this part? Let me help you through that. But again, I think it's really the self-discovery of understanding who you are and how you fit into the real estate piece and really reflecting on that, I think is really important and not just succumbing to all the noise from our industry of you have to be successful. You have to do this. You don't, there's a million different ways. And so I love that you found that, that niche within it. So to unpack your program specifically, who's the ideal agent who is successful? Let me rephrase it. Who, when doing it, they excel. They, they join your program and it's like they're just off to the races and winning. Who's, who's that individual? It's funny because when I think about who that person is and who my, my client is, I, I know that new agents, because it, it really is Agent 101, I know that new agents should be on the platform. But I also know that new agents don't know that they should be on the platform yet. You know, it's one of those things where um, they kind of have to have to learn that you are going to have no you're not even going to know how to write and write a contract. (laughs) You know, you're not even going to know how to send that contract out, honestly. And so it is really um, what we focus on at Mentorical and what I focus on is Agent 101. It's like how to be the best agent, best real estate agent you can be to make sure that you are receiving repeat business, that you're working well with other agents. You touched on it. It's, um, you know, we, we, the relationship with agents is so important. And, you know, I am a firm believer that every, yes, we are going to represent our client. We're going to take care of our client, but every transaction, it doesn't need to be a battle. No, let's work together. We have a common goal and, um, you know, I think, I think a lot of that comes from, 
agents not having the knowledge and transactions not going the way they should. So then other agents get a little jaded, you know, and, um, and, and I just, I want to create a different, a different world for us agents in general. So thank you. I mean, so I'm in San Francisco, San Francisco is seven by seven miles, which is smaller than the Disney parking lot. Crazy to think about. It's crazy. And it's, it's obviously, it's really dense. There's about 6,000 agents. And if you follow the 80, 20 rule, only 20% of those are actually doing any production. So now you have 80% plus you have all the other people coming in to do transactions in the city because of the high price point. And to your point, it's the wild west. Everybody's doing everything a little bit differently. And it's really tough sometimes when an agent thinks they're new, they have to prove themselves and they think a negotiation is like a zero sum game. And it's like, it should be at like this adversarial event and there's a winner and there's a loser. And I'm like, listen, the winners are the clients and we're just facilitating. It's not my money or your money. It's like, we're collaborating to get to the same place together. How do we do that? Yeah, exactly. I think it's great. And it needed that you're doing this. So with with your program, I wish I had discovered this when I was starting out because it's a lot trial by fire. And it's like, you don't know. You just and you don't even know what you don't know. Exactly. Yeah. You you only get to that point when you're in the middle of a transaction and you're like, "Ah, what? Never heard of this. You know, I still have those all the time. (laughs) It's so so many days. I'm like, well, this is a first. Okay. How do we approach this one? Yeah. And so with your program, how, what's the duration of this? Is it continuous? Is it, is the goal to get them up and running by a certain point? Like how's that, how's, how's it formatted? Yeah. So there are, uh, almost 20 modules that it's, it's kind of just videos that, that they can watch. Um, the goal is so that they don't need it forever, but I have to be honest, like I still, to this day, when I do a transaction, I am looking at my transaction checklist on a daily basis. Like day one, where's the MD? (laughs) You know, day two. I mean, I am checking off boxes on a daily basis still to this day uh, in a transaction. So I think at some point, I mean, we there's continuation training within it. Um, but but the goal is you should have really the the meat down. I mean, you could have it down in two weeks. Um, you'll have collateral that goes along with it. But I think the big uh, benefit, because as you just said, there are still things that we come across that we're like, what is this? <laughs> what do we do now? Yeah. So you have your mentors. Um, we have an, a real estate attorney. Um, so you have access to people that can guide you through these situations, again, without having to pay. I mean, come on, a real estate attorney, what are you going to pay just for a consultation with them? (laughs) You know, so uh, but we have to make sure that our clients are taken care of. We need answers to these questions, you know, so I think a lot of brokerages don't have an in-house attorney um, available or if they do, they're they're really busy and they're not taking, uh, you know, calls on the daily from from the agents. And so with Mentorical, you have access to a lot of those tools and resources just to make sure that long term you're you're always taken care of. The way that I paid for it myself, um, again, there wasn't I, I, I never stumbled across a program or anything that would have guided me or helped me. But I had in the office, I kind of figured out who the agents I like their style. I like the way they approach things. I knew that they had systems on the back end. And so I I had a listing coming up and I targeted this specific agent and I approached and I was like, will you join forces with me on, will you, I'll basically give you a percentage of this. And of course she was like, absolutely no problem. And I said, great. What I need help with are your checklists. 
And then she gave me, so I basically paid for the copies of all of these pieces and that's how I initially built it. And so you're either going to pay or you're going to pay. Exactly. You're going to pay. You're going to (laughs) pay. Or you're going to just stumble through these transactions, trying to write down step by step what you're doing as, and then trying to put timeframes. But either way, if you don't have systems in place, if you don't run your business like a business to your point, you're dead in the water. You can't scale. You cannot. And there's no way, there is absolutely no way you can do two, three, four, five deals simultaneously without a checklist. You will absolutely lose your mind. Yeah. I completely agree. I do think education is that one area that I always feel if you have to beg, borrow and steal to get the the finances to educate yourself, it's it's the one thing that you will always have with you. And it's it's putting money in your savings account because it does speed up. It'll speed up something in the future. I completely agree. I mean, I, I going back to my story, it it was the same exact situation. I joined forces with someone that I knew would show me the ropes. I would have learned. I know that no matter what, I, as we talked about earlier, I'm resilient. I know that no matter what, I was going to be successful in real estate. But because I had a mentor, I was successful very quickly. <laughs> um, you know, I know a lot. I My first like year in real estate, I did a $7 million transaction. Like it was, you know, it was fast. It was very fast. Congrats. Thank you. But it, you know, it, I, I think that, you know, I put in that time initially um, and I did pay out of pocket initially, but I have that forever, as you said, and um, it, it's so worth it. Regardless, I don't know how all states or all areas work, but I, at bare minimum, having a mentor an apprenticeship program, it's paramount. And I really firmly believe don't just take one person. So here was my situation and and there was a flaw in it and I I didn't like it. So I joined a brokerage and they assigned me to a mentor and it wasn't the right fit. And I was then married to this person for three transactions. I had a $6 million client that was looking at a property and they wanted to renegotiate the splits. And I was like, this all doesn't feel right. Now you guys are getting greedy on me. So I wound up leaving, went to a boutique brokerage and I said, I will have mentors. I will have three, but I want to be able to choose them for each deal. And the manager was amazing. And she's like, no problem. And so that's why I was able to cherry pick. Here's a hole in my my game. This is what I really genuinely need at this threshold. And I would figure out, I would take all these different agents to coffee and pick their brain. And then I would pick, all right, you're going to be my mentor for this, this new piece of the puzzle. And I would really, truly just try to educate myself with what they were doing. Yeah, exactly. Like you said, it kind of goes back to our, our theme of this. Um, when I, I mean, I saw so many brokerages referring agents to newer agents to top agents and kind of steering them in that direction. But just because they're a top agent doesn't mean they know how to run a business, you know, or they know how to be a leader. I think that's really important, too. They they might not know how to lead and how to teach and train. And, um, you know, not it, it's nothing against them. They're great at what they do, but that that might not be the right fit. And so, um, you know, at Innovate, we've we are very, very careful about because agents will come to us and say, we want to mentor, we want to work with someone, but we always give them multiple options. And I never force anything, you know, it's not like this is your only option as a new agent at Innovate. It is, you know, here are your options. We would love for you to connect with someone because we think you're going to be really successful. Worst case, guess what? You have mentorical. <laughs> So you're good either way. But um, if you want that hands on someone right there with you, we, we've got that for you, too, you know, but never yeah. pushing them um, or steering them in a direction, because as you said, just with your experience, you left the brokerage because of it. So the last thing that we want is for people to leave the brokerage 
um, let's face it, top agents, they've got personalities, you know, so it's very, um, I mean, you don't want to lose that top agent. You don't want friction there and not everyone's going to get along and you don't want to lose. So either way, I think it's, um, it's a great approach to just kind of be hands off, offer options and, you know, see what, see what manifests from there. (laughs) It's funny within sales organizations, I always feel the biggest mistake that most organizations make is you have a top performing salesperson. So they make them a manager. And there's a weird supposition that because you're good at sales, you will then therefore be good at management and leadership. Why? (laughs) There's to your point, like you could be amazing at selling properties to clients, but there's, there's no correlation between that and you being a successful leader, manager, CEO of your business or anything in between. And so I I appreciate your approach of really refining and figuring out the really dialing and what the fit is. And that goes back to the very early part of our conversation of relationship. You have to you really have to understand what is motivating and inspiring an individual before you can inspire and motivate them or find the fit. And it's, it's the human element. It's a really basic concept, which I, we just lose, we lose that one so quickly and I don't understand why. And that's why you touched on it. That's why whenever agents are concerned about, uh, you know, AI taking over the world and, (laughs) you know, doing things with our clients and taking our clients. It's, it really is. I mean, I think in every business, in every aspect, um, you have to have that human element. And, and I, I think, you know, circling back to why innovate is successful, why we you know, have 140 agents in less than five months of existing. Um, it is truly because we care. We pay that extra attention to each individual that joins the team. And um, you know, I'm I'm cautious whenever to to say like, oh, we're a big family. You know, I'm I'm cautious to say that. But um, because there's a lot of a uh, lot of memes going around about that. But um, but no, it's um, if you take that time and it's the same thing with our clients. Right. And the the and even every agent that we come into contact with, whether they're at our brokerage or not, if you treat them with respect, if you treat them with kindness, if you take the time and spend time with them. Um, you know, that's where you're going to see that commitment, that success, that relationship long term. I you mentioned something earlier um, about, you know, people might think like I'm very lucky or um, or you, Sean, you're very lucky, but it's not luck. It's what ha- what we have built from the beginning, you know, from that first relationship that I built with my clients, maybe at Zillow, you know, um, and and it's all about that forming that relationship and doing the right thing for people. When you do that, it comes back around. It does. I've been told so many times, like, oh, you're so lucky you got that account, you got that top account, and now you're representing them on all of their transactions. No, I have a great reputation because I do what's right for my clients, so they want me to represent them, you know? (laughs) Um, So it's just, and and I follow that with my whole, my whole career has been that way. It's because of the relationships that I have and because I've done the right things and done people right. um, It it has come back to me tenfold. Very well said. There's, you remind me of a quote, one of my favorites. It's what we practice in private is celebrated in public. And it's, it's all these things that people don't see that you're doing proactively that it only shows up as the result, but they don't see that hard work or that hard ethical choice. And you're like, I can do this, but I want to sleep good tonight. So I'm going to go this direction instead. And it's that consistency over time, which I, I, I wish more people would take, take that path. 
and 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 hopefully through these different vehicles and outlets they are they're getting an opportunity to say to see the the fruits of of this different direction absolutely i'm blown away still by how fast you've just multiplied your team what are you do you have how are you doing it <laughs> what the heck is the formula behind that what is your recruiting strategy well so as i mentioned um i do have some great teams behind me so i i yeah. honestly can't take all of the credit i work with amazing leaders that um they we all have the same mindset and just like i attract good people because of what i put out there so do they so um i have the best team in san diego um zandra team z zandra Uzoa. she's gonna kill me for butchering her last name um but she has 50 plus agents on the team that helped <laughs> That helped at Innovate. Um, she's been the top uh, team in San Diego for over three years now. Um, she doesn't get all the credit she deserves. There's a lot of competition down there. But, um, she, you know, it's, again, I I feel that we are both, we both lead in a similar way. We both, I don't want to say lead with our heart, but we we care. We care and you can tell that we care. And um, so that attracted her to me and me to her. And, you know, with that, she's boots on the ground and and recruiting down there in San Diego. Um, and then on, I have a, a office in Irvine, Orange County. Great team yeah. leads there. So what I've found um, and then I do have a Corona office as well. And again, top team there as well. So I think. You know, the big um, the the one thing that really helps is I have attracted these amazing team leads. And um, and so it's like they're me everywhere, <laughs> you know, because I can't be everywhere. Um, but I think that that has really helped our growth and our our fast growth because we've got amazing team leads with the same exact mindset, doing the same exact thing out in their markets. Love it. Um, Suzanne, you've just been a wealth of information. This has been amazing. I, if you haven't noticed, I've been taking a ton of notes. I literally filled up two pages. <laughs> so thank you. I love it. Selfishly, these podcasts are more for me than anybody else, for me to <laughs> to look under the hood and kind of figure out what the inner workings of, of different businesses. And I, I really appreciate what you're doing for the community. So thank you. Awesome. Thank you for chatting with me. Of course. And that is a wrap.